Right then guys and girlies, uh, I'm going to slide the, uh, the large of the two out of the box. Basically you get an instruction manual uh, and also um, uh, like a diagram so you can work out if you're going to screw this to the side of your case um, uh, and your instruction manual like I said and you also get um, some fittings. Now the screws are for if you fit it to your case and then the little clips are if you're going to join another radiator but it's very basic really because if I undo all of this you can see this thing is massive. I'm going to put it on the box because I don't want it to mark my work surface. Now I'm actually going to bring the camera off the tripod and give you a look round just so I can show you better. You can see that there's lots of separate sections. Each part like this is a separate piece and they're all joined together so it's like a modular design. Basically the difference between these and the other ones is the length of these radiators and obviously how many of them you have strung together. If I um, spin it round, you can see this end of the radiator is actually blanked off at the moment, but this end is open so this would be like your inlet and your outlet, but obviously we're going to add uh, some more pieces on the end of this radiator. I'm just going to pop me back on a tripod again in a second. Now, I'm going to get the other one out just to show you. I think the bag's, yeah, the fitting bag is still there. I'm just going to undo the box and I'm going to lay these two side by side just to show you. So essentially, basically I need to turn this radiator around, it goes around that way, but that's roughly what we're going to be having. Now obviously this is quite large, don't want to be screwing into a case. Uh, it's actually not what I'm going to be doing on my um, uh, own rig, either when I have it, because what I've got are these feet which go on the bottom they won't go over, I need to slide them on um, but essentially these feet, we put rubber um, rings around these bits push them over and then these feet will actually go on the bottom of the radiator to give it some stability now basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, join the two radiators together I'm going to get the feet on ready and then I'm going to bring you back in a sec when we're ready to start looking at the way we're going to uh, loop the, uh, the rad up and the way that we're going to um, get it all set up in the rig because I've got the rig uh, almost ready at the moment but uh, I'm going to switch the camera off now and we'll be back in a sec. Right then guys and girlies, I'm just fitting the parts together this section onwards is the uh, new bit I had to lift all of the uh, bits out of like the main radiator section so I can fit the little pin that goes in. But luckily they will just kind of push down inside and then I'm going to do the same on the other side. As you can see this side's not done. You can see that I've got to put a clip in here basically so they do all just lift out. Again, it's not the best idea to try and do this on camera but if I grab a clip, just to show you, you kind of need to get enough room. You can take them off altogether, like I've just done there, but you don't have to. Get the clip in, and then it's just a case of giving it a good push home. Obviously, if you do lift more of them out you can get on it easier 
I did the last one with my finger, but I'm going to need to uh, get something on this one to be able to give it a push. Just because I've got you on camera, it's not going in. There we go, it's on now. While I have got you on camera though, I'm going to take... Classic Tiny Tom Logan, camera survived, but I'm not going to edit it out. What I wanted to do was show you the, uh, the inside of the radiator. You can see that it's not just a plain hole. You can see that there is an extrusion on the inside. Anyway, I'm going to get back to uh, fitting these, but what I will tell you is, in the end, these ends, I'm going to, uh, right, that's the blanking plug that goes in the end. Basically, you have to remove that to be able to join the bits together, because um, there's one there, so you do have to take it out. Um, so yeah, very wibbly wobbly video, I don't mind, I don't care, we all know who's making this. Um, I'm going to get back to getting all these bits together and getting this radiator ready for testing. Right then guys, there's the radiator and there's the case, you can see it's enormous once it's all put together. Uh, it's a lot bigger than I was expecting. But this is the uh, heatsink test rig, plain old normal one, basically what I've done it's fitted an XSPC Bay Res Combo, 750 litre an hour res, uh, pump rather. So it's not the best pump in the world, but it's not the worst pump in the world either. It's kind of a nice average one that uh, many people have got options to because they're not that expensive. CPU block I'm going to use again, as you can see I've started hosing up, uh, is the XSPC Raza or Rasa. Now, uh, I've got that hose done ready. Basically the hosing that I need to do now is the one from the pump to go out the back of the case to the uh, radiator and then we need to do one from the bottom of the radiator to come back in to the um, to the uh, CPU block so then that will complete our loop now what I'm going to do is I'm basically I'm just going to get this ready now and hosed up get all the leak testing done and out of the way and then I will bring you back uh, when we're actually doing some uh, load testing and looking at temperatures and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to get on with this. Got a little bit of work to get done. Um, so yeah, I will be back fairly soon. Right then guys, we're all hosed up now. Now I have left, uh, I've changed this bit of hose to make it longer so I can pop the... Um, reservoir out the front. I've also left quite a bit of slack on both of the external hoses uh, so that I can move the radiator around if needs be. Um, there's a fair old amount of slack on this one again like I said it's so I can move it but the idea is is to have the inlet at the top right and the outlet at the bottom left so you have a cross flow design. That's how they uh, suggest to do it in the uh, very limited manual um, so that's the way I've done it. As you can see like I said looking at the size of the case it's like probably you know almost the size of the actual case or the uh, what would be like the side panel. If I put the side panel up against it it kind of puts it into perspective so it's the length of the case and a bit taller but anyway, what I'm going to do now is start um, attempting to fill this up with coolant, which uh, could be interesting to say the least. Um, and then uh, the next you see me, we, I should have a monitor on it. What I'm going to do, just to be different this time, is I'm actually going to put the monitor on the roof so that we can have the uh, it all set up better. Because otherwise, obviously, if I put the monitor over here, we're going to be covering up the radiator. So I'm going to put the monitor on the roof. It's going to look a bit different. You know, it's going to look a bit weird. Um, but at least we'll get there. I may even put the monitor in front of the case or something, I don't know yet. We'll see how it looks tidy for the video in a second. But, it's time for me to do some more work. I've actually uh, had to take my t-shirt off as well. And look, casualty. Oh, TTL blood, not good.
Okay, leak check-in. The case has been put up. Basically, just so that I can get the uh, the top of the reservoir higher than the um, radiator, which obviously helps for getting the flow down, but also to get the air up to the highest point as well. Sorry, air up to the highest point. Um, uh, that's also why I've used long loops and it also helps me uh, move the radiator around because I've been tipping it upside down as well to get the air out because air will normally sit in the tops so I've been flipping it around to force it out and I'm pretty sure we've got it, everything sorted now um, so I'm going to let this leak check now for a good hour, a few hours I'm going to go and uh, make my dinner have something to eat, keep an eye on it though and then uh, yeah, we'll be back for you fairly soon to see uh, how this actually performs. Right then guys and girlies, we've got all the rigs set up, tests are being run. Um, we are currently running, I forgot to open CPU-Z. Uh, I will show you when it pops up. 4 gigahertz, 1.25 volts, as we always do. And the temperatures are currently that, but uh, when I took my test I had 73, 72, 71, 70. Um, that gave me an average of 71.75 degrees as an average across all four cores. Uh, if you take away the 25.6 degrees ambient temperature, that gave us a uh, delta temperature 46.15 degrees and uh, obviously that's at 4 gig um, been running solidly now for 30 minutes well about 35 because of working out the calculations for the temperatures and stuff um, and we're on to what I would call for 4 gigahertz reasonable air cooling temperatures uh, what we've got to bear in mind though is obviously the uh, rad is completely silent if you touch it you can feel now that it's warm um, the hose is quite warm as well the I'd say it's it, the way it feels is a lot warmer blatantly than uh, like a normal water cooling radiator um, yeah but like I said obviously it's very quiet the reason why I've got this uh, little fan in here is um, earlier on the north bridge was deciding to get really really warm so I just popped the flan in there just just for the sake of doing it obviously I, I wouldn't do it normally but um, yeah and uh, the side was on for all the tests by the way uh, I just popped it off so I could show you everything and you can see all the loops and everything in there but yeah that's our temperatures um, now uh, I'm going to, uh, sorry, I do apologise, I'm going to uh, bump it up to 4.2 gigahertz quick at 1.35 volts, um, 200 times 21 and see what temperatures we get then. Just a quick one, 4.2 gigahertz, literally just started prime, we've not even got to the second test yet and the temperatures on the first call are already 80 degrees. Um, and they were mid 50s at idle um, so I'm going to let this run for a bit but if they get much warmer and I'm probably just going to stop the test because let's face it I know it's water cooled but 80 degrees is very very warm air temperatures and I'm not really happy of with the CPU kind of sat at that temperature um, and I'll probably just rock with the 4 gigahertz test but We'll see how it goes, see how warm the radiator gets. It's now you can feel the heat radiating off the side of it now. But I'm going to I'll let it rock for a little bit. Uh, it's currently, uh, yeah, quarter past six. So I'll give it another five minutes or so and we'll see how we get on. Right then, guys. 4.2 gigahertz. We've been doing it for about... 25 minutes now, 20 25 minutes. Anyway, there's the temperatures. Basically, when I took my temperatures, I had 85, 85, 83, 83, which gave us an average temperature across all four cores of 84 degrees. When I took my ambient times, it was 26.7, uh, 
Uh, so 84 minus 26.7 gives us a delta temperature at 4.2 gigahertz of 57.3 degrees. So quite warm temperatures there considering we're on water. The radiator does feel quite warm to the touch. You can feel heat radiating off of it. Not massively, you have to concentrate but it's there and the hoses, the, the coolant does feel warm. The hose is quite pliable, quite squeezable, more than you'd expect normally, but yeah, it's very, very warm. So, I'm going to leave the testing here now, and uh, yeah, we'll get this wrapped up in a conclusion. Right then, guys and girlies, time to get this little one uh, wrapped up. Now, uh, what I want to say straight away is, is what we've got to bear in mind is uh, a lot of people kind of overestimate water cooling. Uh, I've heard of people asking me why they can't run a i7 950 with a 4 gigahertz overclock and a GTX 580 on a 120 millimeter rad before because it's water cooling. It's got to be amazing. And yeah, water cooling is uh, better than the air. Uh, in the respect that water will, um, it's all about heat transfer at the end of the day and water will absorb heat much quicker than air but at the end of the day it will take the heat away from the CPU quicker but you've then still got to get that um, heat out of the water which is why we pass it over the radiator, blast fans over it and then you then transfer the uh, heat energy back into the air again. So basically with these passive radiators you're then expecting the heat to, uh, like the heat convection to do it without air being forced over it and just let it kind of uh, dissipate naturally for want of a better term. Um, so basically with these radiators that's why they're not necessarily, people may have been expecting it to be like the XSPC kits that we've done recently and it won't because they're cooling this is passive this is completely letting uh, everything kind of dissipate itself now we've set the, I've set this system up um, exactly as it should have been uh, and the pump is perfectly good enough for this as well the, the kick around in the res uh, has been perfectly fine every time I switch the pumps on and off you can anyway more than enough to cope with it now uh, I can understand why many of you may be surprised that this isn't that great uh, or the temperatures have been a bit higher, but it's because we've uh, I overclocked the CPU, uh, and obviously by putting more volts through it, you're going to be putting a lot more heat into the radiator, which is then obviously got to naturally uh, dissipate back into the air. Now I've got a 46.15 degree delta temperature on the 4 gigahertz run, which is a very very good delta temperature to have. Anything below 50 is brilliant. Uh, like I said, it's not going to be uh, on par with the active water cooling loops, but that for a um, an air cooler would be absolutely mind-boggling. That's brilliant. Obviously, it crept up to 57.3 delta with the 4.2 gigahertz run, and the actual CPU was running sort of like in the mid 80s. But again, what we've got to bear in mind is this is completely silent. Uh, you can't really hear the pump on the uh, little pump reservoir combo that I use. Um, so he's not really got to uh, any kind of noise issues there. Uh, and one of the things that I will stress is this is kind of, if you're going to have a, a say for you're going to have a stock system, a stock uh, CPU, not overclocked, then maybe a graphics card. But obviously you'd have to be careful with a graphics card because it will dump a lot of uh, heat into the loop. Uh, but you, you could get away with a CPU and a graphics. If you're looking to overclock, then you'd want this RAD um, on its own, really, just for the CPU. But what you've got to bear in mind is that the 1366 CPUs are very warm. 1155 would be cooler. Even the 1366 hex core CPUs, like the 970, 980 and 990, are going to be quite cooler than the 950. Um, but it's all again to do with volts. Uh, so, for example, if you've got a 930 that needs 1.4 volts for 4 gigahertz, that CPU is obviously going to be a lot hotter than this. So you've got to kind of, there is a lot of information that you kind of need to take in and be able to uh, um, 
make your own decisions with it, just realised my car is all buggered. Um, so, it is a, a very good kit because, like I said, it's silent. You can have this mounted on the side of your case. It, uh, it's going to make it look very industrial because it's a fairly meaty unit. Um, but it's going to give you something different because not, still not a lot of people use these at all. And it kind of surprises me, which is one of the reasons why I'm going to be playing around with this for mine. Um, now, uh, the only real sting in the tail is the price because you can get a 360mm like a normal radiator for about £50 cheaper than this depending on the size and the thickness that you get and you probably get the same temps as well because um, it's over the £100 mark so the price does sting a bit and it's not as simple to mount with a normal uh, active radiator you'd be able to just bolt it straight in the roof of your case uh, choose the fans that you want and it's quite easy with this if you especially want to mount it to your case you're going to need to uh, um, mark it all out correctly drill everything then mount it all like that something else really uh, that you need to kind of consider is if you mount this to the side of your case uh, you're then also going to be able to transfer heat into the case it's not really something I mean I wouldn't kind of think it's the case as a, like an extra heat sink for this but do you know what I mean I'm just trying to cover these bases that someone's going to say to me oh do you know what I mean you didn't mount it to your case well no I had it lent against a cold wall instead um, so yeah so I'm, I'm just trying to cover these bases because I know people are going to little, you know, have little gripes about it um, I am uh, going to be testing this over the next few weeks when I get a chance uh, and possibly with a graphics card um, so I can work out kind of how many of these radiators I'm going to need to be able to effectively call my whole system because um, I have to admit even I kind of assumed it was going to be a bit better than this uh, at 4 GHz the temperatures were perfectly amicable like I said especially where they were um, uh, it, was an o it was overclocked but it's as you kind of push those clocks I kind of got a little bit more wary because uh, obviously I'm going to be running my rig uh, with a fairly meaty overclock pretty much all the time and uh, there's quite a lot of instances when my rigs are going to be running uh, uh, like full full whack for us say like when I'm video rendering it can be running um, at nearest damn it 100% for you know what I mean over an hour sometimes but anyway the, uh, the passive rad I am I'm surprised I've never done it before and I do really like do really like it uh, you've just got to be careful with what you expect from it because if you're looking for this to stick one of these radiators on the side of your case that call your whole system and you have it all overclocked and you're expecting amazing temperatures and you want all of that it's not going to be what you want but if you're uh, somebody that lives in a real world and kind of understands uh, how these things work, or at least can appreciate that not everything is going to give you a 20 degrees amb you know, idle temperature, and, or it, at very least you understand the fact about ambient temperatures and the effects that can have on your rig, then you may be okay. Um, uh, I, something I would be uh, interested in is, for argument's sake, uh, say for argument's sake, you've got a hot, noisy graphics card, nailing this on the side of your rig uh, with a mini water loop. Uh, could be really good. Um, uh, again, CPU, but then we've got so many uh, good uh, air cooling CPU fans at the moment that can do it quietly. I'd be a, uh, be worried about that, but it's all kind of balancing out how much heat you're going to be expecting this to pass, it to dissipate, because it's not going to work uh, as good as a uh, air cool system. I suppose one of the ways you could think about it, because I've got all these kind of ways I'm trying to explain it in my head is um, it may give you the same temperatures as your air cooled system but with silence I suppose that could be uh, a way of thinking of it so rather than you've got those fans buzzing away in your ear you've got you, you lose all that noise but then your temps are going to be roughly the same because uh, that was kind of my uh, perception with it with the uh, kind of comparing the CPU temps with a D14 you were roughly getting the same if not slightly warmer temperatures than the D14 but um, then you were kind of 
you didn't have those fans, although the default in is quiet, you've obviously not got the fan at all in there then. So that's kind of the way, it's a very difficult one to sum up this. But, as I said, uh, I could see myself uh, using this. Say for argument's sake, okay, but I'm not going to say HTPC because that would be stupid because it's big. But say for argument's sake, you've got a rig that you leave on all night. Uh, and your CPU fan, even the D14 you've got in there and you can hear it at night and it's starting to annoy you. With this, the only thing that you'd have to worry about, for argument's sake, would be the pump. Um, and pumps are easy to kind of damp out. So you can end up having this, fit it to the side of your case, and then you can have that 24-7 rig that wasn't near as damn it silent. Um, for, say for argument's sake, if you built yourself a rig in the Fractal, although you can tune these cases with the right parts to be completely silent, with this you could, do you know what I mean, still get your water cooling and everything as well. So this one has been an immensely difficult one for me to sum up. Uh, and there's a fair amount of work that went into it as well. Uh, just for those of you that um, are interested, this basic loop has used uh, over a litre and a half of coolant because of the size of that rad, even though it's all uh, thin tubes inside. Obviously we've got some big loops and the size of the rad itself is quite big. So we've tuned through a hell of a lot of coolant. Um, so indeed, yes. And for those of you that uh, are wondering, because I did mention this, why I've not used the feet, um, it was because these feet, uh, even though uh, the guy at Aquatuning told me they were for these, this rad, uh, they don't actually make feet for this rad at all. And uh, this is for one of the um, uh, passive rads that have got a metal uh, bit on the bottom. Uh, so, yeah, that was a bit of a fail. Uh, but, do you know what I mean? There's a lot of aluminium there. Just make a nice paperweight or something. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, I was a little bit disappointed with the feet. But as far as like the... Um, uh, putting it together and everything like that, the, the the manual is basic to say the least. But if you've if you're good at DIY and you don't mind taking your rig apart, or you like you fix your car or you fix your bike or something like that, you won't have a problem with it. But if you're a beginner, take your time. Don't be afraid to ask questions on the forum or stuff. I don't think this will help you very much. Um, so overall, what am I going to give the uh, Cape Core as well? Got to say, I'm going to give it a silver award. The price was uh, is a little bit more expensive uh, than other radiators. The temperatures weren't as good as I was expecting. They're probably a little bit, uh, a fair bit warmer than I was expecting. I was when I was getting 70 degree temperatures, I was kind of expecting that to be kind of high 50s, early 60s at very best, so I, I overestimated the cooling capacity of these. Um, also, uh, you can't get feet for them, so there's no way you can just stand it up on the, the outside of your rig really, you're going to have to kind of screw it up somewhere or just kind of lean it somewhere, rather than having something that you can actually, you know, will support it. So that was another thing. Um, uh, and that's about it really, yeah, temps, feet, um, and the price was slightly more expect, uh, expensive than I was expecting. Um, so that's why I've not given it a gold, kind of, I've been generous and gave it a silver, but still, uh, don't let me, you know, don't think that this isn't something that's a really good product. Used correctly, or uh, utilised properly, or however you want to put it, uh, this could be an amazing addition to someone's rig. They do do a black version as well, so you could make yourself an amazingly stealth uh, black system. <coughs> Might be doing one of those very soon when you think about some of the stuff I've said in other videos. That's one of the reasons why this is here. This is me testing it uh, for things I'm going to be doing later on. Not only my, the possibility of you seeing uh, pass these passive radiators in my system, but something I'm going to be doing on the Time to Live Customs banner. Um, so, yeah, that's why I've been uh, playing around with these. Uh, so, yeah, all you need to bear in mind is, uh, I know I'm rambling on, but all you need to bear in mind is you've got to understand that these aren't going to be as good as an active radiator. You do need to bear in mind that you are going, they're not going to be able to call uh, like a massively overclocked system or something like that. So you've got to find the balance of the amount of heat you're going to be expecting this to take out. As long as you take all that on board, 
you could end up with uh, a product that you're amazingly happy with. Um, but essentially it's just don't ask too much for it at the end of the day. Um, uh, a lot of people probably ask, could you put fans on it? But to be perfectly honest with you, it's not really designed to have fans on it at all, as in air passing over it. Uh, and then that would kind of take away the point of it being passive. Um, but I'm going to leave it there, because that's a uh, pretty uh, in-depth conclusion, to say the least. Uh, I hope I've kind of covered it uh, as best as I possibly can do in my explanation and with the testing and stuff. There is stuff everywhere here today, uh, but I really wanted to get this done. Um, so yeah, this is uh, Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out.